mga kapwa kong Pilipino. Our country will soon face the biggest battle since World War II. Madali lang talunin ang COVID-19, kaya lang may problema. But I believe this problem is easy to solve. You just need to participate. Do it for your loved ones, especially your parents and grandparents. You don't have to trust me. Just see for yourself. Go to a palenque or mercado and you will see folks very close to each other lowering their masks from time to time. They simply pull it up when an enforcer pa passes by. But this problem is easy to solve. I hate making this video because I have such a big crush on a violator named Karen, a vegetable vendor in La Hug Mercado. She is so sweet and I'm always happy to see her beautiful face. But I also know we will lose this war if many people continue to do what she is doing. It tortures me that I can't guide her to do the right thing because I have negative charisma. Therefore, it would only ruin our friendship. Madali lang talunin ang COVID-19 kung alam ng lahat ang tatlong simple na dapat gawin. Wash hands with soap before touching your face. Wear a homemade mask when out in public. Disinfect anything you bring in your house with simple dishwashing soap and water solution. Ito ang weapon of mass destruction laban sa COVID-19. Malamang alam mo na to. Simple lang sana but sadly, I notice maraming tao ang hindi nakaalam nito or alam nila pero hindi nila alam kung bakit importante. So hindi sila sumusunod. But I strongly believe this problem can easily be solved and we could reopen our economy with a death toll lower than the common flu or influenza which we have been having each year. This is possible because Japan and South Korea only has 5 deaths per million population, very low compared to the common flu which is 86 deaths per million population. The solution I'm proposing has zero downside and very huge upside potential. It could save thousands of lives. It would be irresponsible not to try it. Itong video ay template lang para sa mga field or battle commanders natin sa digmaan laban sa COVID-19. Mayor Vico Thor Soto of Asgard Pasig, you are gifted with Avenger-like superpower. Anything you say, millions of Filipino women will listen and follow. Senator Pacman, you are like a Captain America of the Philippines. Idol Rafi Tulfo, you are like the guardian of the galaxy. For us to win this war, you need to lead millions of Filipino men into battle. Coach Mav of Mav's Phenomenal Basketball. Kong Velasquez, Will Dasovic, you are like Jon Snow. Thousands of young Filipino warriors will follow you into battle. Rans, Niana, Aurea, Alexa, you are like the Stark siblings. The coronavirus are like the White Walkers and you will need to play a very critical role in defeating it. Millions of Filipino kids and teenagers will need your guidance. Jamil, Zenaib, Harake, Michelle D, V. Cortez, you are like Natasha Romanoff or Captain Marvel. You have the power to lead millions of Filipina women into victory. Virus lang yan. Pinoy tayo. Ako naman ay parang si Lord Tyrion, kundi si Varys or si Rocket Raccoon. So importante na makinig muna kayo sa akin if you are to win this war. During normal times, we have the luxury to listen only to people who are likable or charismatic. But we don't have that luxury right now. And I apologize in advance that you are listening to an annoying raccoon or in Ang mga administrative heads of government natin ay ang ating mga generals sa digmaang ito. Actually, ang mensahe ko dito ay galing sa kanila. Our leaders are doing a phenomenal job sa pag-implement at pag-enforce ng mga quarantine measures, testing, contact tracing, at napaka-complicated na logistics o pag-manage ng supply lines sa pag-distribute ng mga provisions o mga pangangailangan ng mga tao. 
Gusto ko munang magpasalamat sa kanila at sa mga frontline heroes, lalo na sa mga medical personnel. Kahapon, nasyak ako kasi ang sister ng working student ko ay bumisita sa amin at habang natulog ako, ginising ako. Nakatanggal ang mask niya. Tumatawa at nagsasalita. Ha ha ha, miss na miss ko na sister ko, kayo bumisita ako. Ha ha ha. Kung asymptomatic carrier siya sa coronavirus, tepok na ako. Kahit alam natin ang dapat gawin, kung hindi alam ng ibang tao, talo pa rin tayo sa COVID-19. What's even worse is that ang mga katulong ko palaging nakipag-usap sa mga kapitbahay na hindi nakasuot ng mask kahit ilang beses ko na sinabihan. Hindi ko naman sila pwede palisin kasi hindi naman ako si Cersei Lannister. At ang number one batas sa Diyos ng may kapal is mag-sacrifice tayo to help those who can't help themselves. Also, hindi nila kasalanan yun kasi human nature lang talaga na mahirap Mahirapan tayo sumusunod o maniwala sa mga taong walang karisma, kagaya ko. Naintindihan ko naman ito kasi one time gusto ko mag-practice ng golf sa front lawn namin. Kaya lang maraming ibag o tae galing sa mga aso ng katulong ko. So bumili ako ng pooper scooper, mga disposable gloves at plastic bags. At tinuruan ko siya paano gamitin. Pero instead, pinagalitan niya ako kasi ginawad ko daw siyang tagapulot lang ng tae. And this wasn't one of those Joaquin Chichai moments. Inexplain ko sa kanya na kahit ang mga mayaman at sosyal na tao sa Amerika gumagamit ng pooper scooper kasi in the first place, batas to doon. Pero hindi siya naniwala sa akin. Kinikwento ko ito kasi gusto kong i-convince kayong mga batalyon commanders na ang karisma at influencing skills nyo ay napaka-valuable na weapon sa pag-combat sa COVID-19. The lives of thousands of Filipinos are in your hands right now. Please do the right thing by at least listening to my proposal. Ang malaking problema kasi ngayon is that ang mga messages and orders from our generals and experts are not reaching the people. Naputol ang flow sa message. Kailangan na kayong mga field commanders ay gumawa ng mga viral videos so that everyone will know by heart the three simple things or WMDs that needs to be done and why they are important. It's also very important na huwag nyo akong i-acknowledge kasi pag malaman ng mga tao na involved ako sa campaign na ito and they will find out about my very ugly personality, baka mawalan ng efficacy ang mensaheng ito. I also don't want any acknowledgement. I simply want to help save lives. Nasyak din ako sa nakita ko na COVID-19 PSA sa TV. Dalawang bata nakaharap malapit sa isa't isa at ang isa nagsabi, Huwag mo na hug or handshake. Wave hello lang. Pero they were not wearing mask and they were just one foot away from each other. Dedo tayo nito mga chong. Importante ang proposal ko dito, especially at some point, we will need to lift the quarantine or open our economy. Or else, mas marami ang mag-suffer or mamatay sa gutom when our government runs out of funds and provisions. Ang ibang bansa nagsimula na sa pag-lift sa quarantine or pag-reopen sa economy kasi nag-flatten na ang curve nila kagaya ng China, Estados Unidos, Italy, at South Korea. Pero note that the purpose of the quarantine is just to flatten the curve and the purpose for flattening the curve is to spread out the rate of infection over time to prevent the hospitals from being overwhelmed. So the purpose of quarantine is not to prevent deaths per se, but to prevent deaths caused by lack of hospital beds and ventilators. This means, at some point, Filipinos will have to go back to work even if the coronavirus is still around. Once the curve has gone down enough, such that our generals deem our hospitals won't be overwhelmed. And just like in any war, communication, coordination, and collaboration is the key to winning. So I created a central wiki site where anyone can just go to learn everything they need to know about COVID-19, including the quarantine orders in their localities. I think it will give us a big advantage. So I hope the battalion commanders will propose this wiki site to the IATF. The IATF can take over the site 
and I will give them the password and I don't want any acknowledgement I just want to help hierarchical to so ito yung sa world ito yung sa Philippines ang importante dito yung stay safe that ph mag register kayo dyan and then ito yung sa Cebu The good news is it's possible to bring down the risk to an acceptable level. South Korea, Japan, and Taiwan have shown that this is possible. Pag tumingin kayo sa statistics or data, ignore the number of infections or death. The key figure is the death per million in the population. Note that South Korea and the Philippines are currently tied at 5 deaths per million. Before we congratulate ourselves, Note that South Korea achieved this without a lockdown or quarantine. The question now is, can we maintain our low COVID-19 mortality even after everyone goes back to work and live a normal life? I believe we can, as long as we wear masks and continue to quarantine our elders and anyone with a pre-existing condition like asthma and diabetes. Kasali na ako dun kasi I am asthmatic and I had a near-death bout with pneumonia last year so my lungs are already weak. Of course, the death of just one person is a terrible tragedy. I know I am sounding insensitive to the loved ones of those who die by saying 5 deaths per million is good news. But this is war and our enemy does not care about our feelings. Also note that the common flu or influenza causes 86 deaths per million each year. And nobody even ever talks about it because we simply accept it as one of the many sad realities in life. It is expected that some will blame our government for the sharp uptick in the coronavirus-related deaths after the quarantine is lifted. It is the responsibility of our battalion commanders to explain to the people that as long as we keep the deaths per million close to 86, we should be declaring victory. A very good point of reference is that New York now has a whopping 1,180 deaths per million population. And the governor of New York is even praised and admired for a job well done. And there are now calls for him to be the vice presidential candidate in Joe Biden's ticket. Another good news is that New Yorkers were told not to wear masks because it would take away the supplies for frontline medical personnel. At that time, the experts and officials did not know that wearing homemade face masks from an old t-shirt is enough to prevent someone from infecting other people. Then, when New Yorkers started wearing masks, the rate of infection started to go down. So there is a good chance that we could reopen our economy with an acceptable level of risk as long as everyone is educated and convinced about the three simple WMDs. Japan did not do a lockdown. They just wore masks and quarantined their elders, yet their deaths per million population is only three. Sweden also never did a lockdown. But if you look at the YouTube videos, nobody is wearing a mask. So it could be the reason why their deaths per million population is high at 224. Another good news that just came out recently is that the virus is much more widespread than earlier thought. This is good news because it means the mortality rate is much lower. This gives us greater confidence in reopening our economy, although this is no consolation to the friends and families of the people who have died. In one of the counties of Los Angeles, they did mass testing and found out that the number of people infected were actually 28 to 50 times higher than they thought. Most likely the Philippines would have the same situation which means instead of only 8,212 cases, there are probably 229,936 cases. This would be very, very good news because the no, no, that number of deaths is still the same. Only the denominator of the mortality rate has increased, which means the mortality rate is only 0.24% instead of 6.79%. You might be wondering, 
if wearing homemade face masks is such a big factor in preventing infections, why did it take too long for the scientists and experts in WHO and government officials in the US to declare that everyone should be wearing homemade face masks? Even until now, they are not doing a good job stressing this very important practice. I think it's because the brilliant idea of wearing homemade face masks came from a nobody, a doctor whose video went viral. The experts and government officials are just human beings and it's human nature to protect one's pride, authority, or position of power. I humbly plead to the battalion commanders, please don't make the same mistake. The moral of the story is that we should not depend on the experts and government officials. They already have their hands full with quarantine enforcement, testing, contact tracing, and relief goods distribution. We have to do our part and be proactive. It actually makes sense because gov experts and government officials tend to be orthodox. They can't be creative troubleshooters or psychopathic captains of industry like Elon Musk or Bill Gates or else they will die of boredom because their job is to stick to the norms and confines of the law. Just look at history. George Washington was one of the greatest heroes and considered a great human being, even if he was a slave owner. He never figured out that slavery is an unimaginable evil. In 2008, hundreds of seamen were being kidnapped by pirates of the coast of Somalia. Dozens were abused, tortured, and even killed. As soon as the first incident occurred, the problem could have been easily solved right away by anyone with common sense because merchant ships are much bigger than pirate boats. Just mount a machine gun on the ship and train the crew to operate the machine gun. If a pirate boat is approaching, send some warning signals and if the boat ignores the warnings then start shooting. But they were not allowed to arm themselves as if seamen are a bunch of kindergartners who can't be trusted with a machine gun. Instead, they only allow them to use freaking fire hoses to ward off the pirates. Any uneducated person with common sense knows that's utterly ridiculous. Of course, thousands of ships continued to be hijacked and dozens more seamen were tortured and murdered because they were not allowed to arm themselves. Until now, I still can't understand the logic of the experts. The only thing I can think of is that they wanted to maintain civility. But imagine telling the fatherless child of a seaman that his father died unnecessarily because seamen shooting at pirates don't look good. It's unorthodox. It's not normal. But yeah, your father being tortured, killed, ah, ah, that's normal. It took two years for the experts to finally wake up and allow the merchant ships to arm themselves or deploy navies to patrol the area. And all of a sudden, there were zero deaths from piracy. <laughs> Any uneducated person with common sense would have immediately figured it out. But it took the expert two years. This is also evident in Maui's China, where the economy was being planned by experts and scientists with multiple PhD degrees, but it still resulted in millions dying from famine. But when they dispersed the decision-making to less educated farmers, there was no more famine. In fact, you can trace the COVID-19 pandemic to this event in history. During China's famine from 1958 to 1961, one of their solutions by the experts was to allow wild exotic animals to be hunted and eaten. Not knowing that this is very dangerous because rare exotic animals have viruses that we are not yet immune to. This practice or culture continued until recently and is believed to have caused the COVID-19 pandemic. Germans are one of the smartest people in the world, yet not too long ago, they thought it was a good idea to kill all the Jews. The moral of the story here is that the majority is not always right. What really baffles me is that the WHO has the best scientists, doctors, and experts in the world whose sole job is to study pandemics. Yet the WHO tweeted in January 14 that there is no human-to-human -human infection, even if it already spread to five other countries. I'm not saying we should ignore the experts. Most of the time, experts are correct. 
What I'm saying is, if you see something that will help save lives, don't depend on the experts to give you the go signal, especially that it's clear there is no downside. Focus on the merits of this message and ignore the fact that I'm just a goofball. But aren't Americans way more competent than Filipinos? They sent a man to the moon, they invented the internet, iPhone, Facebook, Google, and many amazing inventions that the world enjoys. We Filipinos can even manufacture our own car. The answer to that is competence comes in many flavors. Example, President Obama is way smarter than me but he smokes which causes cancer. Similarly, in the last civil war of America, biological brothers killed each other and 618,000 men died. Meanwhile, in the 1986 Edsa Revolution, not a single person died. It's normal for Americans to kick their child out of their house when their child turns 18. That's unthinkable to any Filipino I know. Hopefully, our personality or priorities gives us a better advantage in winning this war. The only personality of Filipinos I can think of that would be a hindrance in winning this war is giving too much weight on social status and likability of a person in evaluating or judging the merits of an idea or proposal. The Philippines can be a better model country than South Korea. South Korea and Taiwan are ideal countries but I wouldn't consider them model countries. Both countries got hit hard in the 2003 SARS epidemic. So they already set infrastructures in place and were already well prepared for this pandemic. I mentor my working students and tell them that it's cool to idolize celebrities, but their, their role model should be more like call center agents and school teachers. If you are gifted with exceptional beauty and talent, then it's okay to make that Marian Rivera your role model. Otherwise, your role model should be someone with similar aptitudes and abilities as you. It's like when I teach them to play basketball, I let them watch the WNBA instead of the NBA. Similarly, the problem with making South Korea or Taiwan a model country is that most countries don't have the same testing capacity or amount of hospital beds and ventilators. But if the Philippines reopens its economy and still maintains its deaths per 1 million population to a minimum, let's say under 20, even with very limited testing, then any country can follow our lead. We could prove to the world that testing was not the key to the success of Taiwan and South Korea in combating COVID-19. We can prove that wearing masks is the key to winning this war. In the future, when cheap COVID-19 home test kits are available in pharmacies, just like pregnancy tests, then testing will be our best weapon. But for now, we should not rest our hopes on testing. Just imagine everyone is so impressed at Abbott Labs for claiming it will be able to manufacture 20 million tests a month, but note that the population of America is 320 million. That means it will take at least a year for those tests to spill over to us. Also, although the tests have 0% false positives, it has a mind-boggling 30% false negative. Which means if you get tested and the result shows negative, you should still assume you have it. I really hope our administrative heads of government knows about this because it's very critical in planning the reopening of the economy. I hope I have convinced you enough on the importance of this campaign. Kayo nang bahala magdiskarte or magimi sa video nyo, but I also want to humbly give you some ideas or suggestions. Kailangan emphasize natin na madali lang ang homemade face mask. Kasi may nakita ko sa news isang parish priest sa Cebu na donate ng boxes of surgical masks para sa city jail inmates. I admire him for his dedication to help, but those masks should be reserved for medical personnel. Pwede naman magkataot ang inmate sa likod ng t-shirt para gawing mask, fashion statement pa yan. Or kung meron pantalon, gawin na lang shorts. Hindi naman nag-snow sa Cebu, so okay lang kung naging bagets ang t-shirt. So gumawa kayo ng graphics or skit na nag-illustrate nito. Soon, many of us will be deployed in the front lines of this war. The good news is that our enemies don't shoot bullets. They can only survive in our saliva and after 14 days, the virus will die if they can transfer to another human being and replicate. They can only kill 0.24% of their hosts, meaning sa bawat isang libo na na-infected, mga dalawa or tatlo lang ang mamatay. Their advantage is that they are too small for us to see with our naked eyes and we don't know who has the virus because many infected people never experience any symptoms. But that's not really a problem. We just need to assume that we have the virus. 
and be aware that whenever we talk or breathe, the virus can jump six feet and enter another human being through the eyes, nose, or mouth. It can also fall on surfaces where it can live for days. So if someone touches the surface and touches his eyes, mouth, or nose, that person will get infected. But that's also not a problem. We simply need to block the virus by wearing a face mask. We can eliminate the risk further by washing our hands with soap and water before touching our face. Importante ito kasi may mga kilala ko na supposed to be well educated pero they were passing around a video na nagsabi na dapat daw nakaproperly sealed ang edges ng surgical mask. Hindi nila alam na kahit gaano ka sealed ang face mask mo, pwede pa rin pumasok ang coronavirus through your eyes. I think our soldiers will learn our message by heart if we do something like a funny worst case scenario. Example, if 10 people who are COVID-19 positive goes in your house and leaks everything in the house, you still won't get infected as long as you never touch your face. Or make a skit where temporarily removing your mask is equivalent to firing a machine gun towards your own kababayans or dropping landmines in a road where many of your kapamilya or kapuso will pass by. This is very important because when I go to a mercado or parlenque, I see many people temporarily removing their masks. Paano kung makati talaga ang mata o ilong mo and malayo ang faucet para makahugas ng kamay? Sisiyo lang tol. We must carry a gun anywhere we go. Ang baril natin sa digmang ito ay half liter water bottle na may tubig at 17 ml or 1 sachet na dishwashing soap. Mas trip po ang kulay blue kasi parang Jedi lightsaber. Note that coins and paper bills can contain the coronavirus so make sure to wash your hands after handling money. Just like in the military, your gun should be like your soulmate and you should carry it around wherever you go. So you can disinfect your hands anytime. Just rinse with water whenever you get the chance. Another problem is paano kung ang binili natin na essential goods or groceries ay my coronavirus. We should not assume everyone in the house has the presence of mind and discipline. It's easy to make a mistake of touching your face before washing your hands, especially kids and those who develop a long-term habit or subconscious reflex. Ang pag-disinfect sa mga bagay ng papasok sa bahay, sees you din. mag kayo ng large water bottle at lagyan ng half gallon na tubig at 34 ml or dalawang sachet ng dishwashing liquid. Kung nag-budget kayo, pwede na 1 fourth gallon lang at 1 sachet. Ituslog nyo lang ang item, tapos just use common sense whether to rinse it with water or not. Example, no need to rinse the canned tuna, but of course, the apple needs to be rinsed. Vegetables don't need to be disinfected because they will be cooked. Just train the cook to wash hands after cooking. The coronavirus does not last long in food or organic matter anyway. Pwede mo na rin gamitin ang soap bin na ito sa pag disinfect ng bahay. Dumamit lang ng sponge at punasan ang lahat na bagay or surfaces in the house that we touch like doorknobs, a fridge or freezer door handles, light switches. Gamitin nyo lang ang common sense. Example, pwede nyo punasan saglit ang keyboard sa laptop basta lang naka-upside down and keep it upside down until matuyo. And of course, unplug and remove the battery. Maglagay din ng dipping bowl sa door at maglagay ng sign na dapat ituslog or i-dip muna ang kamay at dapat nakamask ang bisita. No si bakoak, sino ba ako? In an ideal world, the power of a message should be based on its merits. But in the real world, the power of a message heavily depends on the credibility of the source. I hate to toot my own horn, but who knows, showing off my credibility might be what it takes to save lives. So I might as well do it. The coronavirus cannot survive in food. If someone who is COVID-19 positive sneezes at your food and you eat it, you won't get infected. However, if the food packaging such as plastic, paper, or cardboard has a coronavirus and you touch it, you need to wash your hands before touching your face. So it's safe to get rid of the packaging, then wash your hands. Example, put the bread in a bin, dispose the paper bag, then wash your hands. The plaques at the background of the bread bin photo are actually awards given by the mayor of Cebu City to my dad for the many wonderful things he did for the city. Mayor Rama and Mayor Osmania are political opponents, but he got recognition awards from both mayors because his loyalty is to the realm. 
When I was a kid about 40 years ago, I was amazed to witness the drilling of a water well in our backyard. I asked my dad if the groundwater will run out. My dad realized my question was very important. He used to work at the United Nations. He invited his former colleagues who were scientists to help him figure out when the groundwater in Cebu City will run out. They did a study and concluded that in 10 years Cebu City will run out of groundwater. Luckily, they were able to secure World Bank funding for the Lucerne Dam project. That's why last year, while the rest of the country was experiencing droughts, Cebu City enjoyed ample water supply. I remember the scientists' names were Chris Chollerton and David Farberry. They really enjoyed our island hopping excursions. Chris Chollerton's wife was like Linda Carter, the original Wonder Woman. I went crazy when she wore a bikini. David Farberry was like a Vico Soto. The women in Cebu went gaga over him. He looked like Kenny Rogers. One time I asked David, Hey David, you're back. When did you arrive? David goes, I just arrived to die. I was like, what? You just came here to die? I was so stupid. But I did save Cebu City from droughts because of my inquisitiveness, foresight, and foreskin. So maybe my ideas here would also In 2007, I was working in Silicon Valley as a software engineer. I was screaming to my friends and family to sell their houses and stocks because the economy was about to collapse. I felt something was wrong because my friends who were just earning minimum wage were able to buy three houses for speculation. It's just common sense to figure out it's not sustainable and soon the house of cards will come crashing down. One of my golfing buddies, Martin O'Brien, told me he saw the news in the news that President Bush and the Fed Chairman Bernanke assured the public that there was no problem with the housing market. He told me he would rather trust the President and the Fed Chairman, who has all the information and expertise. I told him their job is not to look out for your personal wealth, but to prevent the stock market from crashing. There is never such a thing as a sure thing, but if your plane is about to take off and the pilot tells the passengers not to worry because the plane is not going to crash, you should request to get off that plane because why would the pilot say that? That means there is a potential problem. Anyway, it's not, like, it's not like you will miss out on something big if the plane won't crash. Similarly, if Bush and Bernanke were right and the markets did not crash, it's not like the market would suddenly double and I would miss out on the move. My decision was a no-brainer. Huge downside potential and zero upside potential. Just like my proposal. If the battalion commanders follow my proposal, there is zero downside potential, but huge upside potential. My proposal is a no-brainer. A year later in 2008, the market did crash, so I was able to buy three houses in America at a very cheap price, as in three-bedroom house and lot with swimming pool for only $35,000 or 1.5 million pesos. I rented them out and retired at the age of 39. Everyone wished they listened to me. I blogged about it in 2011. Some of my friends almost committed suicide. I was playing golf in Alta Vista, Cebu with my friend Adrian Sampron from Las Vegas. He told me he bought a 9mm pistol because he was about to commit suicide. Good thing he realized his wife is a doctor and they can still live luxuriously even after his losses. Now, my three houses have quadrupled in value. When the factories in China started to close down at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, I immediately felt this could lead to a worldwide recession. So I contacted my real estate agent in Vegas to sell one of my houses. I also sold my stocks and shorted the oil services. I started buying as the market went down and now I just sold them and covered my short in oil for a huge profit. I post my moves in Facebook in case you want to piggyback. I also wrote a blog about investing to educate my imaginary followers. Mga kababayan, let's not underestimate this virus. Do the right thing and help save thousands of lives. Mat salams.